Hey everybody, welcome to the Gentleman Scholars Club. If you've seen other videos on this channel or if you've seen my Instagram feed, you'll be aware that I prefer overcoats in the winter that have some length and size to them. Today we'll be looking at one such example of outerwear, the Ulster coat, specifically this one from Spear and McKay. We'll be discussing the features of an Ulster coat and whether I like this particular style and why. So like many things in classic menswear, the Ulster coat originated in the 19th century, this time in Ulster, one of the four provinces of Northern Ireland. And the original Ulster coat looks very different than what I'm wearing here today, but it's still worth talking about its origins and its history. Some of those aspects, some of the legacy still remains in the modern Ulster coat. Probably most familiar with the Ulster coat from Sherlock Holmes. In addition to the curved pipe that he smoked and the deerstalker hat that he wore on his head, the Ulster coat is sort of the third article of clothing or object that's closely associated with the way Sherlock Holmes looks. It's characterized by having a cape over the shoulders that ends at around the elbows. Now some people say that Holmes wore an Inverness coat, which is quite similar, though the Inverness coat had a cape that ended longer, uh, that ended lower on the body. The Ulster coat had a cape that ended around the elbows, which would enable coachmen to use the reins most effectively when they wore this coat while driving horses. The longer Inverness coat would make it more difficult to use your arms under those conditions. In any case, the cape was designed to keep the elements off and to add another layer to the upper body. So the modern Ulster coat does retain some of the legacy of the original, and I'll talk about that now. For one thing, it retains that sort of oversized and long structure of many traditional overcoats. Um, it should go below the knee, it should have kind of a full fit. Uh, Spear and McKay tell you that these fit loosely or fit generously, so you should buy your original size and not size up if you're going to wear it over tailoring. I have a sort of a double herringbone here, and as you can see, there's still a decent amount of room in the body. It still looks like a large coat. I can still wear this over uh, things like chunky sweaters, but uh, the key is that it is large and therefore you would wear your original size, your traditional size. Uh, besides that, the Ulster coat is made from country cloths. In its original version, its original iteration, it was supposed to be a herringbone Donegal tweed, right? So tweed being a heavy, hairy country cloth. Um, herringbone, obviously the pattern suitable for wear in the country, and then Donegal being flex in the fabric uh, of other colors. And the Spear McKay version features slate blue and kind of a tan brown. Uh, the flecking is distributed throughout the coat, which adds a little bit of interest to the material. And this is a heavy tweed as well. Uh, this, I believe, is 670 grams, and so it drapes rather nicely. Now, if you're going to get an Ulster coat, I would say go with heavier cloths for that drape precisely. Uh, if you go with lighter weight fabrics in the 500 gram range, they tend to look more, uh, they look looser. They don't drape as heavily on the body. So I definitely would suggest heavier weight cloths to make the Ulster look work best for you. Otherwise, the Ulster coat is always a double-breasted. It features patch pockets on the hips with flaps, and usually they're in the post box format where they look like something you chuck mail into. They have turn back cuffs as well, as you can see here, where there's an extra layer of material to add interest to the cuff. So it's turned back on itself, similar to a French cuff on a shirt. On the back, you have um, a single box pleat at the center, which enables you to get a little bit more freedom of movement in your upper body. It has a half belt or a martingale belt, usually not functional, but adding interest again to the back. Interestingly, it also has two pleats along the sides of the back, which makes it look like your coat is cinched in by the belt, when in reality, those are sewn in, those pleats are sewn in, but it gives that sort of impression. And then finally, it has a single vent down the back with buttons. Now, these are sort of the sexy details of the back of a coat, uh, typical of polo coats and overcoats in general if you get them well made, but also part of the modern Ulster coat. However, the real defining feature of the Ulster is its lapel. And as you may have noticed here, this is a notch lapel, uh, which is different than many other overcoats which feature peak lapels. Now, Simon Crompton, in talking about overcoats in one of his articles, has said that every double-breasted overcoat has peak lapels. Uh, I would disagree with that, and others have said this is also a notch. 
he would say that because there is a very small gap between the collar and the lapel, and that would be kind of a stylized version of a peak lapel. However, I will go with this being a notch, and at that the notch would be almost horizontal in many cases for the Ulster coat. A notch comes straight across in a horizontal manner. So that is really the most defining feature of an Ulster coat. Uh, this version from Spear and McKay features a large lapel as well as a large collar. Probably the most famous Ulster coat out there on the market is made by Liverano and Liverano in Florence. That is bespoke only, and if you look at that, you'll see that it doesn't really have a large collar. Now at the moment, or for now, I do prefer to have a large collar myself. One reason is that if you pop it, it really looks impressive. It has some added drama to it. Uh, the other is that it can give you protection against the elements, the winds blowing. You have that sort of ability to hunker down into that collar. But I really like it for the dramatic flair in particular. Now, not all Ulster coats have that. Spear and McKay have done so here. And overall, they've done a nice job of following the traditional features of the Ulster, um, the ones that I mentioned, and particularly the type of fabric and pattern on the material. Now, this is made by McGee, a, an Irish mill, 1866, founded in 1866. So perhaps it's not surprising that it has fulfilled those features. So those of you who are familiar with the channel probably realize that I already own a permanent style private white Donegal herringbone overcoat and may recognize that this looks quite similar to that and are wondering why I have both. Now the private white coat is uh, de designed with a lot of uh, thought put into the way it was made. Uh, it's made in the UK, um, it has quality materials, it has a lot of nice tailoring details. However, I find that the Spear and McKay is more suited for me in terms of the actual style that I prefer. The Private White, and again, no knock on that coat in particular, is a Balmacan style, which means it's quite plain at the front. If you close it up, if you button it up, um, it shows essentially a clean front. There are no stylistic details on it. The placket where the buttons are, um, is covered with the front of the coat, it's a fly front coat, so you don't really see much detail at the front, it's very minimalistic. There's no front pocket, uh, the side pockets, the slash pockets or slit pockets at the side uh, don't show on the front of the coat, so it's very clean and minimalistic. Uh, this one has to me more drama with six buttons, it has the breast pocket, um, it has lapels, which the Balmacan does not have, Balmacan has kind of a very tiny-ish lapel, it has a small collar. This is again with a large collar and the big lapels. So to me this has more of the drama that's suited to my personal style. The Balmacan style on the other hand, which is represented by the permanent style uh, private white coat, is more of a slouchy thing. It's something that you can wear kind of in a relaxed, slouchy sort of way. Um, and this to me is more of that projection of drama which I like in the winter time. Uh, the selling point of the Balmacan coat has been that it can be worn casually as well as with tailoring. Uh, but I would say that any polo coat, and especially the Ulster coat, which after all originated as country fabric, uh, can do the same for you. If you ever looked at Andreas Venus's Instagram feed, you'll see that he sometimes does these side-by-side -side shots with overcoats, where on one side he's wearing tailoring with the overcoat, and the other side he's wearing denim, or he's wearing knitwear with it. And you'll see there that you can wear polo coats or overcoats of this sort with casual clothing and with tailoring. And as I said, especially because the Ulster has origins in being an informal country coat, uh, you can definitely do it with this, just as you would with the Balmacan style. So if you enjoy that, like the video and follow us at Gentleman Scholars Club for more of the same, as well as brand reviews, style tips, and general discussion of traditional classic menswear. Thanks for viewing.